What's up everyone? My name is Spencer and I'm here on the Rebel Lug YouTube channel to do a review of the Clone Scout Walker, the 20th anniversary edition LEGO Star Wars set. LEGO graciously provided us with some of the new LEGO Star Wars sets to review, uh, but that in no way influences our opinion of the new sets. So make sure to totally uh, check out our other reviews coming up with the new 20th anniversary sets. This 20th anniversary thing I think is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool promotional thing. As far as I'm aware, these aren't limited run sets. They're just part of the regular line. So these things won't be particularly rare, but if you have, you know, like a certain nostalgia for some of these sets, like this set in particular, uh, for me from 2005, this Clone Scout Walker, which I don't have together anymore, but I know it's somewhere in my collection. This is pretty cool. As you can see, they did some cool stuff at the beginning of the instructions to provide some, you know, historical context to, to what this set is about. And then on the box art, it's also, you know, looking a little bit different because it has the, you know, the promotional figure you get extra with the set. It's not like you don't pay for it, of course. Honestly, I think the box art looks a little bit busy, a little bit ugly, but I see what they're going for. Uh, it kind of looks retro and classic, especially with this thing here at the top. This set, all this stuff, is 30 US dollars and 250 pieces. So I don't see any other stuff to do besides just get straight into the review. All right, so first of all, this is everything that comes in the set. Uh, first of all, you get the Wookiee Barricade, the Dwarf Spider Droid, and then the ATRT itself. Everything of which I think is kind of mildly useful. Um, so we're going to take away this other stuff and we're going to start with the ATRT itself. The first thing you'll notice is that this thing is enormous. If you look at the, the scale of the minifig here at the top compared to screen grabs from Revenge of the Sith and the Clone Wars, this thing is enormous. Especially when it's compared to like the Wookiee Barricade here it just completely daunts it. This has been the same since the ATRT that they made in 2005 that this is trying to recreate, and the 501st ATRT that this one is mostly modeled after. The constructions are almost identical between the 501st one and this one. Obviously, the only major change being the color scheme in that this is, you know, a more versatile and neutral ATRT, and of course it's the one from Revenge of the Sith. I understand why they wouldn't be able to make an entire set uh, with one of the small ATRTs, ones that are scaled closer to the one that came in the turbo tank. There wouldn't be enough stuff to make an entire set out of it unless it was like a battle pack or something, but then it would be a really, you know, kind of lame set. So I think for playability and all of that kind of stuff, it's kind of a cool choice to make this, you know, bigger than it normally would be, like way bigger, probably twice the height or more than it would be normally. Because it kind of gives access to, you know, like a lower price, but still cool looking walker for the Star Wars universe. Now, if you're a mock maker and you want to, to use your sets in mocks, in this case, I would recommend trying to build your own ATRT. That's my honest opinion. I should probably be straightforward by saying, uh, in any case, I would recommend if you're a mock maker buying pieces over buying sets anyway. But in this case specifically, because it's so easy to make a small ATRT that's much more better scaled and probably cooler looking uh, based on just you know how the minifigures will sit in it compared to just how enormous this one is compared to this little guy here at the top. But regardless of that tangent, we can get back to what this set is really trying to be. And what it's trying to be, I think it does a pretty great job at it. So first of all, the legs have fantastic articulation. Uh, you know, they can go in a whole number of positions and because the feet are so big, uh, it can kind of be posed in a lot of different walking stances. Um, this one looks a little bit awkward, like it's skipping or something, but you know, if you try hard enough, you can get it in a really cool walking position where it's probably stable enough to even be displayed. Um, if you're going to be putting it in a mock, uh, like I recommended you don't do, there are anti-studs on the bottom so that it could just be, you know, mounted straight onto the studs or on the base plate or whatever. Um, but again, in terms of playability, the amount of articulation is really awesome because that's something that might be compromised in a mock, uh, you know, for the sake of detail. But that's something LEGO would never compromise themselves. This front turret is pretty cool. Uh, you know, it can go over 180 degrees all the way around, uh, which I, you know, suppose is nice, but it's pretty simple construction. It does have this stud shooter um, right here, which I don't really want to do because I'm never going to get the stud back again. I'll just end up somewhere on the carpet, but I guess I'll do it. I guess it didn't go as far as I thought, but Regardless, I think it looks cooler without the red stud there. Probably my favorite part of the entire set is the construction for this, this front unit here. This is one big unit here at the front that can kind of come off. And I think 
as a builder, this is a really cool construction. It gives a really cool look once it's done. You know, it's so angular and all this stuff when it just has the single point of articulation here and then these two separate angled flaps coming off the middle part that just give it such a cool look from the front of the ATRT. And then when it's accompanied with the, the stickers on the front, it, it's I can see why they would totally reuse the front of the 501st ATRT. Um, and it really comes together in the sand green and dark tan, dark gray and light gray, a little bit of black, but you know, mostly those colors, color scheme here. This seems to be the ideal color scheme for this. It looks super nice. One last thing I guess I would point out is that with the antennas here at the top, this thing is extraordinarily tall. I'll place this Wookiee next to it just so you can see how tall it is up here to the to the top of the antennas this thing is super tall which i think in terms of being a toy and in terms of just looking cool they did a pretty good job of that not necessarily in terms of being accurate i guess though the dwarf spider droid is kind of an even greater case for what i was trying to say before this is something that could be made i think really easily um, even with just some online tutorials or trying to do it yourself as a mock so it's kind of pointless as a set. This is also like an add-on model to the ATRT, so it's not going to be, you know, as detailed or whatever. It's not, you know, its own standalone model necessarily. But for the most part, I think I do like what they went for here. I think the legs are probably the weakest part. Those don't look very cool. But two parts that I quite do like, I like the phone here for the front eyes. Those look really cool head on, you know, the red eyes. Um, the circular red eyes and then they have another another stud shooter here on the front that's on a ball joint Oops, one of the legs came off I think ball joints are kind of lame for mounts here But it's the most efficient way for them to accomplish that so I, I kind of get it I really like the antenna that they did with the with the minifigure fencing sword. That's super cool I don't really entirely understand why they put a clear piece under here. There's a clear 2 by 2 round brick here at the bottom that's held in by an axle so it's not even easy to pop off and I think I see the purpose it's so that you can like put the droid in like a walking position but still have it supported but I think with four legs that are you know able to support that tiny body it could do without a clear piece and probably be cooler in the end because you can obviously see the clear piece in reality so you know it kind of kills that illusion I don't really get the point of that but that's really all I got to say about that thing finally we have this Wookiee barricade I don't mind this addition, you know, for playability sake. I think this is a cool addition um, in that case. They made a good choice to use these, I don't know, what are they, like rock mold pieces. I've seen them used in a couple of different cases, all really creatively. And in this case, they're whatever that stuff is uh, on the beaches of Kashyyyk when the droids are trying to raid it. And they have it in this cool arc form here, done with some hinge plates. And you get seven of these cool black rock you know pre-molded pieces uh, and then i also think the mounted the mounted rifle here is super sick um especially you know with the little guards on the side of it and stuff like that they did a good job there as long as this didn't add too much you know cost to the overall model i don't know how much these kind of weird black pieces that this is primarily made of would would you know cost in terms of production okay so we have uh four uh, mini figs here i don't know if this battle droid counts as a mini fig but i'm not even going to go over it there are diamond dozen you see what you get uh first of all this scout trooper is the same as the one that came in the new atdp that's new for this year but otherwise nothing new the only change uh by the way in that mini figure from the one that came in the battle pack and the turbo tank and all that other stuff uh is those little dark tan marks on the insides of the legs near the top it's like a change hardly even worth mentioning in my opinion next we get a generic wookie warrior which i think is cool to get because you know we normally end up with just like a lot of chewbacca's uh for wookies there are similar wookie warriors to this one that have the dark brown mold that's this shape but the dark tan printing is different and i believe some of the printing on the other ones was dark orange there's also some fur like printing on the bottom and he comes with you know a musket for some reason um because I guess Wookiees are like primitive or something, but yeah. And finally we get kind of like the thing, the gimmick about this set, which is the 20th anniversary Lego Star Wars minifigure. This is the original, you know, Darth Vader, probably the one that I think the most people have. This is the only one that I have. So there is a newer model 
of Darth Vader that has since come out. But this is one. This is probably the one that's like the most out there. There's so many of them. And the torso print is the same here as we would find there. Of course, the helmet mold is the same. There's not a lot to see there. The thing that makes this minifigure special is what's under the cape around the back. I think this is actually really cool. On the minifigure, it says 20 years Lego Star Wars. Um, and it takes up the entire back. So that makes this like, you know, kind of a cool promotional minifigure. Of course, this isn't like a limited run of sets. So it's probably not going to be like all that rare or special or anything like other promotions have been, but you get what you get. You get a, you get a cool, a cool printed four x four modified tile and it says Darth Vader at the bottom. Uh, so that's what makes this one, you know, exclusive to this set apart from the other four. So now for kind of my final verdict on the set. It's 250 pieces and 30 US dollars. Okay, Google. What's 30 divided by 25? The answer is 1.2. Okay, so normally you aim for around 10 cents a piece for a really solid value, but this of course is a licensed brand and all that stuff. The Star Wars sets have been kind of extraordinarily expensive over the last few years. And I'm gonna give kind of two final verdicts here, one of which I've already kind of touched on throughout this review. And the other is that I think that this might actually be a pretty okay value. Looking at all the stuff you get here, including a Darth Vader, you know, a regular Wookiee, a, a clone um, that's been in some other battle packs and stuff throughout the years, but if you haven't um, been around to get those, you know, maybe this might not be a bad opportunity. And of course, you know, another battle droid. The barricade, the dwarf spider droid, and this walker, I think looking at all of it for $30, it might not be the worst value I've ever seen in my entire life. As for pieces, so as you heard, Google, um, the price is around uh, 12 cents per part, which isn't necessarily the worst thing ever, but obviously it's not the best value ever. You know, prices are gonna go up and the cost of pieces is gonna go up. So it's not completely terrible. My other final verdict, which is gonna be applied to, to most sets, if I'm gonna be honest, as a mock builder, if you're a mock builder, I would recommend buying pieces with that money and trying to design your own stuff. I think this is a really good example of that where it's not too difficult to design a dwarf spider droid or an ATRT either off of online tutorials, online instructions, a lot of which might be free, that is actually much better scaled if you're trying to put it into your mocks and stuff um, and it might be much more detailed. The only thing you're probably gonna miss out on is just that this thing, first of all, is enormous um, and you won't have stickers and you probably might not have the really great articulation of the legs. Um, but that's actually about everything I have to say about this uh, Clone Scout Walker 20th Anniversary Edition. Again, thank you to LEGO for sending over these sets. I'm really happy to review the other ones. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the Rebel Egg YouTube channel. We're going to be putting out a lot more content from across our member base. Um, for example, myself, I have my own YouTube channel called LEGO Spencer, where I build mocks primarily. So I hope you found this review useful, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.